evil does not have power to make us do anything. So, the name of this talk is Obstacles to Accepting God's Grace. Father God, I just thank you that I can lift all of us up in prayer. And I pray that we will um, be open, that you prepare the soil of our hearts to hear your beautiful holy word. And that your word will fall on fertile soil. So that we can protect that word that you're going to put in our heart now. And we can become doers of the word. Imagine spending four days with the inmates in prison, in correctional services. These could be people that have done bad things to us, and so on and so forth. But with God's love of the Messiah, the Moshiach, in our hearts, me for the last 33 years now, and others longer and shorter, with that love, we can go into the correctional services, the prisons, <coughs> excuse me, and share the good news, God's free gift of everlasting life with the inmates. Because remember, we are all inmates. This world is a prison and we are all in chains to sin. We are all in chains to unrighteousness. God says our own righteousness is filthy rags in his eyes. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says that all hearts are wicked. There's no one that hasn't sinned anywhere. And King David said in Psalm 51, after murdering the husband of the wife he had made adultery with and tried to lie and cover it up, said these words, I was born with sin and iniquity in my mother's womb and God, please forgive me, cleanse me, give me a new heart, fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can go and turn others away from their sins and their iniquities. So obstacles to accepting God's grace here in prison and out of prison. You get a lot of speed bumps in the road and these speed bumps is an example of the obstacles that we face in prison and out of prison. So God wants us first and foremost to be able to be forgiven. God wants to be our friend. So removing painful memories is what God wants to do and then he wants to forgive us so that we can forgive others and so that we can forgive myself as well. So this teaching is so that we do not be cowards. God wants us to be overcomers and more than conquerors with Messiah, Yeshua, inside our hearts, inside our soul. So when I, Glenn, made my wise decision, my choice, to follow Yeshua, Messiah, I never worried what my friends or my enemies or my family might think. I just followed the love of God in my heart. I heard him knocking at the door of my heart, Father God's Messiah, Jesus, and I answered that knock and I opened the door of my heart. No matter what my enemies thought, no, no matter what my family thought or might think, and no matter what friends might think. I didn't know that they're going to be, most of them, quite upset that I've chosen Jesus because after I did that, that choice, I realized it's for my own good. I can't carry on lying and stealing and raping and getting drunk and running from the receiver of revenue, running from the SABC TV license, running away from responsibility, running away from God. And reading his word and finding Messiah, Moshiach, Jesus, the time for me I had stopped running. So obviously many friends are going to look at you and say, you don't drink with us anymore. You don't come and look for girls with us anymore. You don't smoke drugs with us anymore. You don't, you're not fitting into our gang, into our group. So they start making you an enemy. But this is fine. It happened to Joseph as well. Joseph's 11 brothers didn't like Joseph, what he was talking about, following God. And they chucked him in the pit. And he landed up in Egypt and then in prison for doing nothing wrong. And then out and then in prison again for doing nothing wrong. So 
if you think about it, if Jesus went to the cross for us, surely we can be grateful and suffer for joy. For with him, Jesus took 39 stripes on his back on the cross, a crown of thorns on his head. They spat on him and they mocked him and they made him carry a heavy cross far to Calvary. And then they put him up on the cross with three nasty nails in his feet and his hands. They gave him vinegar to drink when he was exhausted and thirsty. Then they put a spear in his side to make sure he was dead. And all of this in front of his mother and some of his disciples. Well, here in prison, we love one another. But you will have negative people around you. Just like outside prison, I also have negative people around me. They're so busy doing their own thing that they don't want to know about Jesus. But I made my choice to be forgiven and be happy. So now I must just be peaceful, not fighting. Just bless them, pray for them, and love them. Isn't that wonderful? John chapter 10 verse 10 says that the thief comes only to kill, to steal, and destroy. But Christ Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So once we have Christ in us, then we have to submit to Christ. Hold on to him. Bambalela, 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 bambalela. And then when we hold on to Christ, then we resist the devil and the devil will go. You get baby Christians, not so baby Christians anymore, and you get mature Christians, false and true Christians. So you can also call them hypocrites. You also get the love of many Christians that's growing cold, and lawlessness is abounding everywhere. So we must be on our guard, and we must guard our heart from any hypocrisy, any bitterness, any offense, anything that would come and take us away from the friendship with God. Many people are praying for us all over the world, and Jesus is praying for us. He's seated at the right hand of God in heaven, praying for us. People all over the world are praying for us here in prison, and our team, Kairos. Isn't that wonderful? Can you feel it? Wow. So, um, I've learned to do this for the last 33 years, what we are telling you today. Because it's so easy for drugs and pornography, alcohol, gambling, cursing, shouting, arguing, fighting. We have to choose to stay away from all of this. To hate sin and to love righteousness. Gossip, racism, gangs, sex, peer pressure. We must choose to stay away. By submitting to Jesus, resisting all these things, they're from the devil. And then these things will flee. So we have to face them head on. We have to renew our minds daily and deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow Jesus and help other people. That's what it's also about. Don't we want to help other people? Yeah, Joseph did that to help other people. King David did that to help other people. So the war that we have is between spirit and flesh. And Jesus won the war for us. He said, I overcame, so you can overcome. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 3 says, Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Then you will prove God's good, pleasing and perfect plan for his life, for our lives. Joshua 1, 8 says, If we will meditate on the word of God day and night, whatever we do will be prosperous and successful so everywhere all over the place it's going to be tough in prison out of prison i have people all around me at home next door neighbors um, customers clients down the road up the road they are very nasty they don't want us to follow jesus it's a big test and we have to pass the test so if i fall in any of the above Let's say I make a mistake. I must repent quickly. And Christ 
will lift me up, cleanse me, and continue, I'll be able to continue running the race with Jesus and not have any condemnation or guilt, but freedom. So to forgive 70 times 7, not be offended, no sulking, no bitterness, this is amazing. Here we have Kairos number one, we finished a few months ago, and then we started reunions where we come back and encourage all those Kairos number one. Now we're on Kairos number two, and we are going to have reunions as well. Every third Saturday of the month, every month, we'll be back to come and encourage you, pray with you, and help you grow in God's grace. Isn't that wonderful? In Psalm 91, it says that God has commanded his angel to be go ahead of us and to protect us, to fight for us, and to make a way for us. Psalm 23, it says, Though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says we must wait earnestly for the power of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, so that we can be witnesses of this new life that God has given us. Isn't that wonderful? And then please God, one day at a time, you never know if we're going to live tomorrow, but if God gives us that grace, Kairos number 3, Kairos number 4, Kairos number 5, 2023, 2024, but the key is to take one beautiful day at a time. You see, God sets before us blessing and curses, life and death, and God says choose life and blessings so that you and your children's children may live. Let's choose life. That's the wise thing to do. So now the next talk that we have is going to be walking in God's grace. Thank you so much for listening to us and may the Holy Spirit continue to teach us and I'm asking us now to please bow our heads for two minutes of silent meditation. God bless us in Jesus' lovely name. Amen.